Good afternoon, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, whenever this decides to be on the air. I'm Pastor Barry Jackson of Victory Productions LLC. I'm just coming to talk to the dads. You know, the dads are going through a lot of stuff right now, and um, they don't know what's going to happen from day to day, from week to week, from month to month, since this coronavirus came. And the dads are going through a lot of stuff because they're providers for the households. And they need to know what to do and how to do things. And a lot of us dads don't talk to one another like we're supposed to. But there's a lot of dads out there are doing a good job. And there's a lot of dads that need guidance in showing their kids and their wives love. But that, a lot of dads need to know how to do certain things and to do them the right way. And I just come to talk to you this morning. I'm not coming here to beat you up. I'm not coming here to down you. I'm not coming here to criticize you. I'm not coming here to judge you. I'm just coming here as a man of God to talk to the dads. You know, our Heavenly Father, is he's an awesome man of God. He's awesome. God is an awesome, awesome, awesome God. Jesus Christ is our Savior, and the Holy Spirit will lead us and guide us to all truth. But right now, what we I need to talk to your dads about is being a good dad, uh, being a supportive dad, being a dad when uh, the kids are being bad, being a dad when the wife is, is frustrated and, and needs you to step up to, to do what dad needs to do to, to take care of the household right now. Needs to wash some dishes, need to go to the laundromat and take clothes to the laundromat. Need to go to the grocery store, needs to do certain things. Now, since you have the time off, <clears throat> excuse me, to do these certain things. Now, God is having me to come to talk to the dads about just being who you are. But trusting him in this situation right now. You need to trust the... Trust God in this situation. You need to trust your Heavenly Father in this situation. And when, when I mean by trusting Him, you need to pray. You need to seek His face. You need to ask questions. And you, you need guidance right now. I know a lot of y'all are, are stubborn. A lot of y'all are hard-headed. A lot of you are rebellious, stiff-necked, and all that. But God still loves you in spite of all your faults, in spite of all the things that you're doing. But God still loves you in spite of all. He has a love that passes all things. And we have to learn how to love ourselves dads. Dad's got to learn how to love dad. Dad got to learn how to love himself before he learned how to love his children and his wife. Yes, it's a process. Yes, it's understanding. Yes, you didn't get it when you was a child, so how can you pass it on? to your children. But if you came from a single family household, dads, it's understandable. If you came from a household with both parents, it's still understandable. But we as as men of God that have to stand in the gap to pray for y'all, we understand too. We've been through a lot of stuff too as well. We had to learn how to be loved and learn how to love. Because it was a process. Because we thought we wasn't worthy enough to be, have this collar on and this cross on and accept Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. It's a process of all what you were doing. It's a process of all how we handle handling ourselves. It's a process of doing things the right way. And a lot of times we want to do what we want to do. But I come to you as a man of God. I come to you as a dad. I come to you as, as, as a brother as well. But I'm coming to you as a man of God to talk to you, to the dads, and I'm a dad myself. But we all learn have to have learned to love each other. When we learn to love each other and love to love ourselves, dads, we have to love ourselves. We have to be the first partaker of this fruit to love each other and love yourself. We have to love ourselves to know that we're, we're good providers. We're good men, even though society and everything else tears us down at times and put a stigma on us, but we're still good dads. Yes, we were misled, we were, mis we were bamboozled, we ran amok, but we're still good dads. God sees the best in us. 
He sees so good, so much good in us to where he has me to come on in front of this camera and talk about it. Because the dads need to be encouraged to let them know you're doing a good job, dad. If you know you don't get the pat on the shoulders, the, the kids don't tell you that they, they, they love you, the wife don't tell you that she loves you, but you're still a good dad. When the wife tells you that you know you, you, she loves you, the kids tell you that they love you, it's true. But I'm talking to the dads that's going through right now, knowing that it's hard right now. They don't know when the next paycheck is coming in. They don't know how they're going to pay the bills. They don't know how they're going to do this. They don't know how they're going to do that. But dads, 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 trust God with all your might, with all your capabilities. Trust God. When you trust God, you trust in everything there is to trust. You put everything in His hands. Don't try to do everything in your ability because it's not working. You see that you're laid off. You see that you have a click on unemployment. You see that you're going through as a society. The whole world is going through right now. The world is just not you're the only one. The world is going through. People are being laid off. Companies are closed and shut down through the pandemic. But you have to understand one thing, dads, that God still loves y'all. Don't throw in the towel. Don't, don't throw that towel in because he's going to throw it right back at you. Don't, don't, don't say nothing that you're going to regret later on saying to your kids or your wife. Don't do that. Don't think about suicide. No, that's, that's the cowardly way out of it. Hang in there. Trust God with all your might. Trust God with all your sight, with everything that you can. Yes, you may not could see him, but you know that he's there for you, dads. Dads, I want you to understand something. This is the time for you and your family to come together on one accord. It's time for you to sit down and play some games with your children. Talk to your wife. Your wife is, is a pastor. Sit down with your wife and do some studying with her. Dads, you are pastors. You sit down with your kids and your wife. You start doing some studying with them. Or do some board games or word games. Do some fun things together while you are quarantined. This is the quiet time when dads really need to talk to God and be in a solid room. Go, go somewhere where it's quiet in the house. If it's even in the bathroom, go in the bathroom, close the bathroom door, just scream, yell, holler, whatever that you need to do to get all that frustration out from being quarantined. Right now, you all need to get that frustration out of you. You need to have an understanding that God will hear everything that you say in that bathroom. That's your quiet place. That's your secret place. Have the shower running. Just go ahead and talk to God. Let it all out. Let it all out. Don't hold nothing back. If you are using profanity or whatever the case may be, yes, other people tell me, Barry, don't say that. But yes, other men are going to use profanity, and it's going to slip. He said, get it out to you now, for you could be delivered of your profanity. You could be delivered of your drinking. You could be delivered of your smoking. So, in the process of you being home and being in your secret closet is your bathroom and talking to God, when you come out of that bathroom, it's going to be a different man when it, when it walks out that bathroom. I believe it and I'm declaring and I'm decreeing it that you'll be a different man when you walk out that bathroom after you finish talking to God. Because you're not going to be in the same place. You're not going to be the same attitude. You're not going to be the same this or that, whatever the case may be. But your dad's got to realize one thing. You're the head of the household. And you're working with your wife as being the head of the household. And your kids are looking towards you as being their hero. So be the hero God has you to be. To talk to God and ask God for directions and guidance. Don't have your pride standing in the way of doing this. Right now what you'll need to do is give God praise and give him a hand clap. And tell them, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Because the simple fact of this matter is that you need us men of God to pray for your dads. 
Because I know your dads are going through. I don't care what race, creed, or color you are. You're a dad. You're going through some things right now. You're, go, you're going grocery shopping for things that you never did. Now you have a list in your hand. Because I see it. When I go to the grocery store, I see a lot of male men doing shopping and got grocery lists in their hands and doing things or picking up the phone and calling the wife, uh, this is what you wanted, honey, this is what you needed. It's not making you less of a man, it's making you a better dad in the process. And your, your children and your siblings are watching what you're doing. Your mother and father, if they're still alive, they're watching what you're doing. Your cousins, your uncles, your aunts, and everybody else is watching what you're doing. You are leading the way and making a pathway to be a righteous man. You don't have to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. But you have to understand this here. You, you're in a place right now where God got everybody in quarantine. But he got a lot of dads stepping up to the plate and doing what is right for lead their place to do. It's nothing wrong going grocery shopping. I have done it for years. I enjoy it because I could pick up goodies for me. See, that's that's the whole thing about it. You could pick up some goodies for yourself at the same time. Because she ain't there to tell you, nope, you can't have it. But you go ahead and get you a pack of cookies if you want to. Or get you a little small ice cream if you want to. Or get you a little small bag of chips. You know you ain't supposed to have that soda. So the next best thing to you is to get some flavored water. So get you a pack, get you a a couple of bottles of flavored water when you go grocery shopping. But dads, remember one thing. God loves you so much that he sent his son to die for you. For you dads. Your dads have to understand that God is looking towards y'all, men, to do what a man is supposed to do. It's supposed to be a provider. It's not always the finances. It's about your presence. It's about your love. It's about your compassion. It's about your, your presence. And one more thing is about your patience. Your patience are being tested, 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 tested. Constantly over and over and over again. So the best thing for you to do is to get on your knees and ask God to show you how to deal with patience. How to do things the right way. How to ask for questions. How to be saved. So if you want to be saved and you want to ask the questions, go ahead. Go to Romans chapter 10 verses 9 to 13. Romans chapter 10 verse, verses 9 to 13. That's the best way to do this here right now, dads. I'm talking to the dads. I'm talking to the ones that are quarantined. I'm talking to the ones that are in the hospital dads, that are in the front of the line dads. They are dads too as well. They're worried about their families too as well. But all the dads in the world right now, what you need to do is grab your family, hug them, tell them that you love them, get on, get, everybody get on their knees, start praying, seeking God's face for directions and guidance while we're in this quarantine time. It's a quiet time. It's a praying time. It's a seek in his face time. You have to be in his face right now to do this here. It's not an easy job, but it's a, it's a worthy job to be a good dad. And a dad is, is an awesome job. You sit back and you see your children grow in front of you. You see the, you see the good and you see the bad in them. But you, you're still there regardless of what they go through in life. You still will show them love. You show them compassion. You show them understanding. They could come to you and talk about issues. They could come to you and just pour their heart out. But dads, understand one thing. It's all about Jesus Christ, our, our Savior. It's all about Him. You need to come to Him, accept Him as your personal Savior. Have that relationship with Christ, and your house will be in order. Your children... Your, your, your family, everyone is looking toward the dads to be a sustainer. But Jesus Christ is our sustainer. He's the one that will lead us and guide us to all truth. To all truth. Truth like it never been done before. But I'm going to pray out right now. I just had to come to you and just plant this seed for, for God to water it. He could bring the increase. But my job is to do this here. 
But I want to tell you one thing, that we love you. We're praying for you. We're praying for the dads that are on the front line. That's the hospitals, even the military, even the police department, the fire department, the ambulance department. All those are dads. Want to go home to their families. But they want to go home to their family, but they can't go right now. They have to be in that front line. But dads, we are praying. The men of God are praying for you. We're standing in the gap to pray for you and your families. We want to tell you, thank you for standing in that front line. Thank you for being the servants that you are. Thank you for all what you're doing and the comfort of someone, some of them are going home. But thank you, Dad. Thank you. But the fathers that are home right now, spend that quality time with your family. Tell, tell your kids that you love them. Tell your wife you love her. Call your mother and father if they're still alive. Call them and tell them that you love them. Pick up the phone to check on everyone. You are the head of the household. Check on everyone. Yes, it's not putting a lot of pressure on yourself, but pick up the phone and say, hey, man, I haven't talked to you in a while. How are you and your family doing? I just, come, I just want to pray with you. I just want to tell you that I love you in the name of Jesus. But if you want to accept Jesus as your personal Savior, I'm repeating it again. Romans chapter 10, verses 9 through 13. To accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you just repeat that. And it will, and it will happen. But I'm telling to the dads, we all love you. We all thank God for you. And you just hang in there. Hang in there. Don't, don't throw in the towel. Don't think about suicide. Don't think about killing yourself or your family. Don't think about it. I rebuke that spirit right now in the name of Jesus. I come here as a pastor, as a, as a friend, as a brother, as a dad. I just want to let you know, Pastor Barry Jackson of Victory Productions LLC want to tell you, God loves you that much. So stay encouraged. Stay inspired. Do what you need to do as a dad. We're going to pray right now. Lord, Heavenly Father, we give you the praise, the glory, and the honor right now, Lord. Touch every single dad who will hear this message today. Touch their hearts. Prick their hearts, Lord, Heavenly Father. Have them stop smoking cigarettes. Have them stop drinking. Have them stop doing cussing, Lord. We thank you right now. We're going to talk to the dads, Lord. We thank you right now, Lord, Heavenly Father, that they will be delivered and set free, but they will accept you as their personal Savior. They will have a relationship with you, Father, Dad. They will have a relationship with you, Father. But, Dad, this is all about you right now. It's not about nothing else. Yes, the jobs are gone right now, temporarily. But you'll get unemployment. But you got to trust God in this time. I'm just your pastor, Pastor Barry Jackson. God bless y'all. You have a terrific day.